Infrastructure deterioration is a persistent issue that affects developed and developing countries alike. The American Society of Civil Engineers gives the nation's infrastructure a D-plus grade. Our roadways experience ever-growing wear and tear, and each year, traffic volume increases with vehicle miles traveled reaching 3.2 trillion in 2019. This growing strain on roadways has left 43% of public roadways in poor or mediocre condition. Deteriorating roads force motorists in the U.S. to spend an additional $130 billion each year in fuel repair and operating costs. Thus, it is apparent that an effort to document these deterioration challenges is required for an economic and quality of life improvement in the nation and throughout the world. This required time, however, to document every instance of road damage by human inspection is nearly insurmountable. For instance, our friend Max worked for the South Dakota Department of Labor documenting the road conditions and their deterioration. Here he is detailing the nature of that work. Back in uh, 2018, uh, I'd drive around to South Dakota to various locations and basically rate the pavement based on which uh, streets needed to be improved or repaired upon first. Um, my day-to-day -day work basically started at six, seven in the morning and I'd rate on, I'd drive with another coworker and we'd look at roads anywhere from six to seven in the morning to about five, six at night. By developing an automated solution that reduces the time needed to document road damage, assessing road damage will be significantly more efficient and thus roads can be attended to faster. Detecting road damage through machine learning has been a topic of expanding interest and was thoroughly explored by Hiroya Maeda and his team at the University of Tokyo in 2018. Through this effort, his team compiled a vast collection of road damage data and set out to build a state-of-the-art model for automated road damage detection. At this time, they succeeded. Machine learning, however, is a rapidly advancing field, so the model that Maeda produced is already out of date. Therefore, we were tasked with finding a better, more efficient model and expanding the real-time capabilities by implementing this model on a smartphone. This model we intended to produce was meant to bridge the gap between computer and human image recognition with regards to the identification and classification of road damage. To do so, we employed a deep learning algorithm known as a convolutional neural network, or CNN, which takes an input image and assigns importance, that is weights and biases, various aspects and objects in the image such that it is able to differentiate one from the other. The architecture of a CNN reflects that of the patterns neurons in the human brain and the organization of the visual cortex, where individual neurons respond only to stimuli in a restrictive region of the visual field known as the receptive field. A collection of these fields overlap to cover the entire visual area. A CNN consists of an input layer, various hidden layers, and an output layer. These hidden layers perform mathematical operations known as convolutions. As the convolution kernel slides along the input matrix for a given layer, the convolution operation generates a feature map, which contributes to the input of the next layer. Each neuron in the neural network computes an output by applying a specific function to the input values received from the previous layer. The function applied to the input values is determined by a vector of weights and biases, typically real numbers. The process of learning involves iteratively adjusting these weights and biases for increased accuracy. After a number of iterations, the model should then be able to identify particular features in selected images that match the dataset presented to the CNN during training. In our case, the model should be able to identify cracks and other road damage since they are conceptually, and thus visually, similar to the data previously presented to the model. The model that we developed was trained using the aforementioned dataset from Maeda et al. The dataset contains 9,053 images containing 15,435 instances of road damage to be used to train image recognition networks. After much deliberation, our group elected to use the YOLO v5 object detection algorithm to train our model. YOLO stands for you only look once, meaning the algorithm only uses one forward propagation pass through the neural network. The yellow algorithms are highly popular as they can run in real time while also giving relatively high accuracies. Using yellow, we trained two iterations of models. The first was built using weights defined by yellow v5 for general image inference. This model only achieved modest results, 
though it is relatively lightweight and uses limited memory. This first model was able to train for 200 epics on 2,560 images. Second, we trained a model using weights from a remodel built in 2020 by a team of researchers from USC for the Global Road Damage Detection Challenge 2020, which used a future iteration of our dataset. This model achieved much better results, though at the cost of size. This model is much larger than its predecessor and could only train on 1,024 images for around 200 epics. For both, we utilized a CUDA-enabled NVIDIA 3070 GTX graphics card, which is one of the best graphic cards available to consumers and rivals many of the GPUs available on the University of Minnesota campus. That said, let's examine the results. The first model, which used the general image reference YOLO 5 weights and biases, showed promise in its recall and precision, but was not yet consistent in terms of confidence for us to compare it to any state-of-the-art models. For those who are unfamiliar, convolutional neural networks do not use accuracy as a metric to measure the quality of a CNN. Instead, they use what are known as recall and precision. Recall refers to the number of relevant or correct classifications divided by the total number of existing relevant classifications. Precision, on the other hand, is the fraction of relevant or correct classifications among the number of overall classifications made. From the first model, the newer model shows vast improvement showing increases in recall over precision, recall over confidence, precision over confidence, and F1 over confidence. F1 is a metric that relates recall and precision. When testing the new model, we were able to successfully detect and classify road damage in real time while driving around Minneapolis neighborhoods using our newly developed smartphone app. Originally, we started making the app using Microsoft Visual Studios due to the familiarity with the software and Microsoft Visual Studios' ability to create one set of code uh, that would function for both Android and iPhone systems. After getting the camera functionality to work for both Android and iPhone, it became apparent that we wouldn't be able to actually create our whole app with one source code for both systems due to the complexity of the app. Uh, so we decided to make an Android app uh, due to Phil and I both having Android devices, and this led us to use Android Studio. After a little searching, we found an open source template for an Android application built on top of the YOLO 5 model in Android Studios. From there, we added the ability to save images as a JPEG uh, once damage was found by setting a threshold of certainty for which a successful detection happened. Once the image was saved, a corresponding entry into the data log file was written with the image number, type of data, uh, certainty percentage, and GPS location. After we added those functionalities to the app, we then worked on importing the model. To get our model into the app, we first needed to start with the weights file that was created after the last epic of training. This file then needed to be exported into a Torch script format and optimized for mobile. This process essentially makes accessing the data more efficient outside of the PyTorch environment. The Torch script version of the model could then easily be loaded into the app along with the text file with the names of the classes of damage. Finally, testing was conducted in a live environment to determine the frequency of running the model along with the threshold at which a detection is both shown on the screen and saved in local storage. Using a live camera feed, the Android app will show the damage detected in real time by placing a box around the damage, along with the type of damage and certainty shown above. Along with the real time feed, every time damage is detected, the application saves the image to the phone, along with writing the image number, damage type, damage certainty, and GPS coordinates to a log file. The images and log file are saved in the same folder together located in the document section of the phone, with the folder named Road Damage Detection followed by the year, month, and date. With our new app that leverages a portable and mobile machine learning framework, the possibilities for road damage detection are greatly expanded. No more are the days of spending countless man hours driving through rural or urban settings and meticulously documenting road damage details such as damage type and location. With our app, a single live feed can capture these details with minimal user effort. Of course, the user must possess a smartphone capable of capturing high-quality photos, but this limitation is seemingly non-existent in the digital era that we live in. As the difficulty to collect road information diminishes, so too do the barriers to infrastructure repairs and maintenance. 
If the use of this model and app were to be put into widespread use by those who engage in road damage examination, they would find themselves in possession of a living and growing data set of road damage that is highly accurate, easy to comprehend, and easily maintained. Our hope is that this app, or at least the path that we took to build the app, could be put in place to help improve our roads from a D plus rating to at least a C minus. And with a little more effort, maybe we could do even better. Thank you for watching this video. We hope you enjoyed it. And please let us know if you have any questions. Have a great day.